Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're going to install NetBSD. I do hope you enjoy it, and let's get into it. Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're installing NetBSD. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter here, or just number one. I mean, that boots us up normally. And we'll go ahead and start to boot up the installation. And we get the cool green uh, text on this one. Okay, we want the installation messages in English, so we'll hit enter. Just use the arrow keys up and down to select. And the keyboard will configure a keyboard depending on what one you have. We're going to use the unchanged. We want to install NetBSD to the hard disk. And we're okay with the procedure, so we're going to go down and say yes. We want to use a 16 gig drive here. So we're going to hit enter. It's the correct geometry. Very rare that you'd have to set it by hand, but it's uh, okay to use that. Now in this case, we're actually going to use the entire disk. And we want to install the NetBSD bootloader. So we're going to say yes. If you want to dual boot here, you would say no. But 90% of the time, you're fine to say yes here. We're going to, for now, use the existing partition sizes. And what we actually want to do, and yours may look different. I had done this in testing. Um, what we want to do is uh, go ahead and to start, say zero on the size there and then go down to partition sizes OK. So we're going to do that on, on both of them. But I, I want to explain this part because it can get a little confusing. OK, and we also want to say the same thing on this one. And say 0. OK. Now normally, <coughs> when you zero them out, you have whole disk and you have NetBSD partition. Um, what I want to do is I have a 16 gig disk, and in in the computer I'm using the virtual machine, I have 256 megabytes of RAM. So just for this, I'm going to use double that. So you would take your disk size and subtract that. So we have on our main partition where everything will be. We want to use the file system FFS v1. And our start is we want to use minus one because we want to start at the beginning of the disk. All right. And it starts right after the MBR. For the size, this is where we want to take into account the swap that we want to have left over. So we want to say, in my case, 15872. All right. And here, with NewFS, you do want it to format this partition, so hit Enter here. And we do want it to mount, so say yes. And the mount point is we want slash. Okay, that gets our main partition ready. So we're going to say partition size is okay. And now below this, because we have a little bit left over as we spoke, we're going to choose swap for the FS type. Again, the swap is only used if we are running more programs and we are exceeding the amount of RAM we have. We need an extra place to store the information. And for start here, we want to say actually A because we want to start at the end of that partition. Okay? So you see now it's ending right at our main partition. Okay, and for the size here, and we can actually use minus one to just use to the rest of the disk, but if you were needing more partitions, you wouldn't want to do it that way. We're going to use 512. All right. Okay, so when you're done, you should have 15.8 gigabytes for our root, and we have 511 megabytes for our swap. All right. So that should be fine for most cases. That's plenty of space for an installation. Okay, we'll keep the default disk name. 
and this is your last chance. If you did make a mistake, say no and restart the entire computer. But we're okay right now though, so we're going to say yes. Okay, now it's uh, partitioning and formatting everything. And uh, once it's done with this, <coughs> you actually get a chance to go in and do initial configuration before you start, um, b before you restart into NetBSD. Okay, and um, this is important. You do want to use the BIOS console here most times if you have, if you know you need to use a serial port on what you're using. Choose these. This is where NetBSD will show you everything and where you will log in. Okay, basically where you will use the shell. Um, we're going to use the BIOS console though because then it will use our come out to our monitor like normal. And uh, just hit enter there, and it will go down to exit, and we'll hit enter. Now, our case, we're assuming we may want to expand this and use a desktop on it, desktop environment, anything like that. If this is a server or a router or firewall, you'll want to use the minimal installation or even a custom installation. We're going to use the full installation. So just to enter, we're going to use the top option there because we're booting off a CD-ROM in this case. This will work if you boot off USB as well. And um, now it's just installing the sets. And then once this is done, we're almost done with the entire installation. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and pause this part. And I'll be back in one second. Okay, so the sets just got done. And it does one more thing for, um, for, the, for the system. And now we are here. And what we want to do is just do as it says and hit enter. And this is where it's a little odd, because you may be tempted to push finished configuring. But there's a few things we should do first. Just saves us time afterwards. We want to go up to configure network, hit enter. We want to configure this interface. Auto select is fine, and just perform an auto configuration. Now, if you have a DHCP server on your network, you probably will. It will get an IP address. If you don't, we can uh, put it in statically as well. Double check these, make sure they're okay. Mine are fine here, so we're going to say yes. And this actually makes it so it will do it when it starts. So we won't lose the config. We want that, so we're going to say yes. And the time zone, you can leave it at UTC if you want, or just pick, you know, whatever one just for purposes of this video. And um, the root shell, if you prefer the C shell or K shell, go ahead and pick that, but bin SH is fine. Now, do change the root password. So we're going to hit enter and say yes. And this is the administrator for the entire system. You can do everything you can think of um, to this system. So make sure the password is secure. And th this is how you're going to install ported software. So things like Firefox, your desktop environments, any other software like that that you would be using with this, you do want to enable installation of binary packages. What they do is they pre-compile them for you. And basically, it saves a lot of time when you're installing software. So just hit enter there. And if you didn't configure the network, you can do it there. But just install package, in. And um, once that's done, we'll just return to that screen. But um, don't skip this. If you skip this, you, you'll have to use FTP after you install and um, get this package. I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend doing all of this here. All right. Now, you can use the man page if you want, but uh, just you can, or do what it says up there. And if you do want more flexibility with your installation of software, and actually compile it from source, fetch and unpack package source. We're going to do that here. Again, because if you don't do it during installation, you have to go in and use FTP later. And I will pause this because this is a little bit uh, bigger file, so I'll see you in one second. Okay, we're almost done here installing the package source program. And again, once this is done, we'll just return to that screen. Any second now. 
Okay. Now the last few options, now that we've configured the major things, these other ones are optional, and these are actually programs that can be important in some cases. But the enable SSHD, I wouldn't recommend that unless this is going to be a server or a router. Okay? The reason is this allows you to get a shell over the net any network. The, it could be the network this is on or the internet. The problem is you, they bots and things tend to attack this service and it can compromise the security of NetBSD. So you don't want to enable this unless you understand why you need it first. Okay? Um, NTPD, this, um, once NetBSD gets the correct time over network time protocol, this service can uh, send that time, a copy of it basically, to clients on the network. Now, this would be helpful in um, very secure environments where you don't want malicious uh, time being given to clients, so log files aren't skewed and things like that. But those would be very, very secure environments. And in this case, we don't have to worry about that. So we do want to run NTP data boot, though, because we want our time to be correct. We just don't want to, want to necessarily serve it over the network. So we're going to hit enter, make sure it says yes. This is for DNS discovery. We're going to leave it off for the moment. And this is uh, would be, it would automatically start your desktop environment for you. You can feel free to turn it on, but I'm going to leave it off in this case. And this is for encryption and decryption of data on your partitions. You can go ahead and leave it on. Logical volume management, you can leave off unless you need to do more advanced things with uh, your partition management and things like that, like RAID and things. Same thing with RAID frame, just leave it on. If you, if you do need it, it will be there for you. If you don't, it's, it's okay, it's not hurting anything. Okay, now we do want to add a user though. We want a separate one. So we're gonna say ttech, and we do want to add us to the wheel group. If we don't do this, we have to log out and log directly in as root to do anything that needs administrative privileges. So we're gonna say yes. The shell ben sh is fine. Make sure the password is separate from root's password. And at this point, we're gonna say finished configuring now that we've done all of the major things. Okay, we're going to hit enter to continue, and uh, this can be a little confusing, but you actually have to go down to reboot the computer after it restarts the installation program. Alright, at this point, we're going to hit that, make sure you take the disk out of the drive, and we, we made it that time. Sometimes you're not fast enough, and it will reboot the installation. Okay, now we're uh, booting back up. And um, we'll just end up at the login prompt. <clears throat> and that was what NTP date did there. If we didn't have that, it wouldn't set the time on boot. And a few more um, things it's got to do. Okay. And we can log in as T-Tech now, or whatever user gave during the installation. Let's run top real quick. And uh, this is a system monitor. And um, the, the system is, is up and running at this point. It's a very easy system to use. And uh, you will notice the 512 megabytes of swap. And if we do df-h, there is our partition, dev wd0a, which is 15 gigs. Only 1.9 of it is used. We have 12 available. And um, yeah. So the last thing I want to show you is uh, if we use su and then we type roots password. Okay. Make sure to type the correct one though. If, if I can remember it. Okay. Um, now we're logged in as root. And we can run things like package ND uh, in package in update. That is a tongue twister. And um, let it update the the packaging system for us. Um, but anyway, it, it would just update that, and now it's updated. 
The other thing I want to show you is if you go into etsyrc.conf, this is where your main configuration is. The thing I want you to understand is if you want to set a static IP address, you can comment these out. These are for DHCP. And um, you can do if config underscore WM0 uh, or whatever your network interface is called. Because yours may be different. But we want to do init for an IPv4 address. On my network, I'm going to use 192.168.0.1. And then we're going to say netmask. The slash 24 is fine. And then we're going to say default route equals. And this will equal your default gateway. Okay, and then we're going to hold Shift and tap Z twice. And then run Etsy rc.d network restart and then we can use if config to double check ourselves okay we're all set after we put the if config uh, configuration in there in rcconf we want to go to etsy resolve conf and in this case i've already put them in but if you're using static you have to add them here and if you know you want to stay with static use ch flags schg etsy resolve conf now if we try to edit the file at all if i try to delete this line even though i'm root it doesn't allow me to do that now if for some reason you don't want that use ch flags no schg etsy resolve conf and that turns them off for you the file there the permission so if we try to do the same thing delete that line save the file now we can do that but again we'll just close that back up and most times unless you rerun the DHCP client on boot the file will not change so you don't necessarily need the flags but that's just my preference but with all that I'm Tyler with T-Tech I do hope you found this video helpful and have a very nice day